All right, folks, I'm going to get started here. Hi, hi. Um, <clears throat> welcome, welcome. We are starting today the KPFA Business Skills Core Class. Uh, this is a comprehensive class that's going to teach you about business plan development and how to succeed as a farmer uh, in Hawaii. Um, how to ask for lending. It'll help you in organizing yourself and your the sporadic mind, like I have. Uh, <laughs> it tends to, uh, it, uh, it gives you um, essentially a plan, something to stick to, something to stick by, something to show other people um, your business plan because words will never express what a whole packet of information could, could express, okay? Your, your executive summary will summarize your whole business plan, but uh, nothing like being able to hand over a tangible copy of your business plan to somebody, have a full understanding of the finances, the marketing, who your customers are and all that stuff so that when they are done, you don't have to answer so many questions. <laughs> it's really kind of nice. People always say, what are your, what's your business idea? And you just slam that business plan down and be like, just get that back to me when you're done. And then you shouldn't be any questions after you're done reading that because you should have every single thing in there that, would, that somebody would need to have a full understanding of your business plan, okay? So as far as agriculture goes, as far as colloid surfaces and uh, diffusion and all that stuff, it's all done. You made it, did it through. Um, we do have one individual, Mele, who did not attend either one of the two classes. Everybody say hello to her. Um, we have Davey from the, from the second class here today. Sheldon, right? And Sheldon. So, um, oh, I'm sorry, Jeanette. Jeanette, sorry. Three of, all right. So we have uh, three folks from the uh, from the uh, uh, second class, and uh, most everybody else here from the first class. Hopefully, by the time we meet again, we'll have 30 in the room. That's the goal. Uh, that's hopefully for me. Uh, for you folks, the less competition as far as getting that grant might be beneficial. So, but we're looking to get as many heads in here as possible and trying to be as successful as possible. So I'll hand it off to Louis for a second. Give him a chance to do an introduction as he does. And then um, we'll pick it up from there, all right? First, just want to thank all of you for being here tonight. Uh, I, was, I was a little concerned. I thought that uh, we'd have more people here tonight. And I thought maybe not everybody got to know this part. I, I was just wondering about that. So. I know that everybody in this class got notified. We're not missing too many from the first class. Um, we're mostly missing from the second class, who we just met on Saturday. Oh. They all knew we were meeting here on Tuesday. So. No, I thought about the first class, I thought we had 18, so. Yeah, 18. 18. No, we had 16 finish with the uh, full, um, I guess, the full business, or the so full, 16. Full, uh, certification. And then there was, I think, 13 that, did yeah. not, that only did the participation. So we're talking 20, 20, I was, looking for, I was looking for 29 today. Oh, OK. Well, I just want to thank you all for being here. And uh, thank you for teaching the course. And so. Uh, Looking forward to a good, uh, well-written uh, uh, business plans. So, anyway, I just wanted to be here and welcome you all. And uh, thank you again. Yeah. Um, all right, we're gonna go through some. We're gonna do some uh, housekeeping first, and then we'll go through the syllabus. Uh, it's very similar to the first one, so we should be able to roll through it quickly. Um, I have an attendance list here. I'm going to hand out books while I do attendance, so you can talk amongst yourselves, but when you hear your name, come get a book. Um, the books that we have available for you folks is a wonderful book called Bankable Business Plans, the second edition. It, this, this is really comprehensive and short, and the, the look at how big that writing is. You should be able to finish this no problem. Um, uh, if anybody is, has an issue with, with needing to read larger print, uh, here it is. I also have a smaller print one if this kind of hurts your eyes. So um, let me know if you, know, if you don't want a bigger or big print one. But I, I had purchased these later for your group, and this is what they gave me. So I can't say much about that. But we'll just get these out, and then um, I would like you to 
actually read this book. I know, I know. Most folks in this class have not read anything. <laughs> but they've still learned a ton of stuff, OK? But at the same time, you're not going to do well on this end of the class if you do not read this book, OK? The other ones you were able to skate by, you were able to kind of wing your way through it. Um, without a full understanding of what is expected in a, in, a, in a business plan, especially financial section and stuff, this is it, all right? So I'll hand these out, call out some names. These are your books. You can keep them. You don't need to finish the class to keep them. We want you to succeed, OK? You know what I'll do? They combine this sheet for me that says name, phone number, and email. You know how I usually do name, phone, phone name, and email. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just hand out a book to you with a number on it. And if you could put your name, your phone number, and email, and then the book number that's in the book, this will probably go a lot faster, OK? Hold on to that. We'll start with you. There you go. Hold on, I gotta write in them. Thanks for helping me. What? Yeah, read the whole thing. It's big print. You won't hurt yourself. Oh, uh, no, no, just write the number. Number's fine. Set four. Can you write OSET number six in there? OSET. Six. Your six. Seven. seven. Write OSET eight in there. Your number nine, Randy. Enough. Thank you. Thank you. Can you write OSET 11 on there? Right OSET there. 11. Yep. Write OCET 12. Can you write OSET 13? OSET 14. OSET 15, please. OCET. Pass those six back for me, please. Here's this sheet. I need you to fill that out right away. Here's our assumption of risk, same one you guys filled out before. It talks about, um, we're not going on any field trips, but it's assumption of risk that if the ceiling falls on your head. Oh, I already did this slide. <coughs> You're assuming the risk that the ceiling won't fall on your head. There you go. And then I'll just take attendance based upon that sheet that's going around, and so we'll skip over attendance. Um, I need the photo release form because I'm taking pictures of your beautiful mugs.
Two more photo release. Oh, they got some. Yeah, I, I sent six that way. Syllabus looks pretty similar to the other one. Four, send those down. One for you. That's one for you. This is the uh, evaluation rubric. I'll go over this in a second with you folks. Guys in the uh, in this the second class, here's your homework. I have not gotten to it yet. Look, it's all out of order. I'm gonna have to figure out who's is who's. So as soon as they're done, I'll make sure everybody gets marked off on those. Assume that if you got it sort of correct, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it to you. Also, um, I think I forgot this on the last class or both classes. When we did the soil survey day, um, and we went over w the report that you get back after soil survey, nobody has seen an official one. We only went over that, that mas uh, master gardener sheet. Here's an actual one. So uh, I'll put it over here so you guys can look at it at the end of class. I just, I had found it and I wanted to show it to you folks. So, whoops. It's a two pager. Ooh, there's a couple of them in here actually. It's like I have two of them in here. So at the end of class, I'll place it right over here if you want to take a look to see what an actual soil survey sheet looks like. Okay, getting to the homeworks, that's done. Um, you, I would actually prefer them in separate piles at the end of class. We'll collect them at the end. <clears throat> Do. Sheldon, you too. This is a uh, survey that I didn't hand out at the end of class. I forgot. Um, that's for evaluating me as a teacher. Please be honest. Uh, I don't see those. Um, and I just get a score at the end. Please make sure you fill out the bottom, especially where it talks about uh, what classes would you like to see in the future. Okay. Please get that to me by the end of class today. Yeah, so it's back. There you go. There you go. What I just handed you folks is, we can go over this now. This is three separate business plans from my previous full class that I taught the, this course on. Um, these were the <coughs> top dogs that I've seen over the last year and a half. Um, so they're, they're stapled together, but eventually you'll get to the second one, which is about coconuts, and then eventually you get to Debbie's, which is a persimmon farm. Um, I really, really, really want you, you, you to use these as a template for understanding of what is required of your business plan, okay? Just assume that you are going to have to recreate everything in these business plans, but for your farm 
and for your details. And hopefully it would be this detailed, OK? Um, please remember that this course is practice. This is to learn how to write a business plan. It's not necessarily how to write the business plan. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is to practice, to build your skills, so that when you are finally ready to draft that full business plan, um, hopefully it's just a, the same thing you've, you've done, but just a little bit altered with some real concrete numbers in there. And then um, you can use that as your, your full comprehensive business plan. But this is just a template. And we, this is just all practice, OK? Um, I say that I request that <laughs> all the students in the class do not do your big idea that you've been kind of pondering on. Uh, maybe a, a um, slightly different plan, just so that you can hammer out some details, but yet at the same time not be committed to an idea. Um, use this as practice. Don't use your big idea. And when we're done with this class, you will know how to Gather up all the information, do your big plan. So when you're frustrated, and if I get tears on my shoulder, which I, have, I get every single semester, of I can't do this, I can't do this, this is too hard, this is way too difficult for me, it's way outside my wheelhouse. Um, I mean, basically what I can say is uh, use the template, um, come up with some information that looks like the information that you'd see in the template, and don't use your big idea. If you need to use fake numbers, I'll repeat myself. When it comes to the financials, and especially marketing data, market analysis, what are the coconut numbers out of Hawaii or whatever, I don't need the real numbers. Okay? What I need is you to show me that you understand what numbers need to be there. So that when you do your final business plan, you can plug in those numbers. You don't have enough time in this class to really do the full market research. You need to do a comprehensive business plan. You don't. Okay? You have about as much time to draft one. Every hour you spend working on the business plan should not necessarily be a little bit of market research, definitely. Um, but most of it shouldn't be trying to figure out exactly what your numbers would be to see if you're profitable or not. It's really just to see if you know where to plug in the numbers so that after this class is done, you can find out if you're profitable or not. OK? If this was the 12-week 12, uh, 12 class twice a week for four hours, which I typically do, then you would have enough time to get those real numbers to me. Okay? These guys have the real numbers in there. I think one of them, it's a little off. Um, I think Joan had said she made like a million and a half dollars. And I think she, she just didn't know how to do the conversion and just pick the number or whatever. That's fine. But she, in her financials, she has literally every single thing that you should have. Also know that Joan, this first one here, this coffee farm, this isn't her whole business plan. This is everything but the appendix. And I'll go through the different sections of the business plan today. Um, her appendix was as big as this binder. Okay. In her appendix, she had market research for about five years of coffee in Hawaii, plus her business plan is in Indonesia, and I think doing some distribution from New Jersey. So she's got all the numbers in there. She has letters from senators supporting her plans. She has letters from other farmers and marketers and people in the East Coast that say that they want to buy her product. Okay? She has all those things in there. Okay? I wouldn't expect you to come up with an appendix that big. But just know that Jones, as complete as it is here, is totally incomplete because her full comprehensive business plan was top notch. Okay? She had done the work. She had really done the work. Um, okay. I would expect your appendix to include, I'll talk about it in a second, but definitely letters, definitely um, some brochures of products or uh, some sort of marketing scheme or some, maybe a logo. All these are things that don't really have like a fit in the business plan, but they just kind of go at the end. I would hope that you guys would certainly have all those things in there. They don't have to be real letters. They don't have to be a letter from, from a senator saying that he supports your program. What it is would be a fake letter that you wrote that has his name and information. I support your plan. I think it's a great idea. Signed, Senator so-and-so, and then you put that in the appendix, and then I, I count that as if it was a letter of commitment, or not a letter of commitment, a letter of support. And then in the real business plan, then you go out, 
and you talk to that individual and you get that real letter, okay? So I need you to know that this business plan development course is to learn how to do a business plan. As much as this grant is designed to have you draft a working business plan, they didn't give you guys enough time and it's not fair to you to, to expect you to have a business plan done in such a small period of time. So give me what you can, make it as full and detailed as you can, but the, the details don't have to be real. Do you know what I'm saying? Everybody catch what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Uh, okay, Jones thing, here we're at, that, that, business plan, okay. Anybody got any questions so far? How are we doing on time on that camera? Okay, still going. Um, all right, all right, all right. All right, let's go through the syllabus, and then we'll go through the rubric at the end. All right? Hey, you guys know me. You don't need to know anything else about me, do you? If you need to, need to know anything about me, please give me a call. I'll talk about myself for hours on end. Uh, but for the most part, it's the same write-up that we had last time. Nothing's changed. I've sent out more PhD requests. We'll see what happens. OK. I, I, st I still like to scuba dive. Oh, and then Felix. Felix just turned one. He's running around. He's 14 months now. He's just cracked two molars in the last two days, so he's a terror. He's an absolute maniac right now. Um, so he's doing OK. Are we good? Everybody's got sheets. you got your syllabus in front of you. OK. Let me pull out a syllabus so I can follow along. Instructor, that's me. You know me. There's all my contact information. Please, everybody's been really great about calling my cell phone during those specific times. Thank you so much. OK. Um, please send me an email. I do prefer email correspondence. And I will continue doing the same email thing that I did on last class. If that was an issue for you, you're going to have to address that on your own. OK? Um, that's how I'm going to do my correspondence. That's how everybody's going to know about stuff. I'm at Hawaii Community College. I'm right here in 379A. If anybody forgot, room three, just bang on my door. But I strongly suggest you call me before, because I'm probably not going to be here. Uh, my schedule looks like for the next, through November, um, that I'm going to be either in Kona, Havi, Honoka'a, Puna, or Hilo, one of the five days out of the week, each one of those. Okay? And then on Saturday as well be two of those, either Havi, Honoka'a, or Puna, Hilo. What would, I've done is basically the 12-week course that, that this is based upon, we've um, expanded it. So we've decided to, instead of having me teach 30 people in one room, we've decided to do have five teachers at, at five different locations teaching 20 students. That's 100 students we're trying to knock out at one time. Okay, So I am now stepping back from the teaching position as far as this course goes. And I'm now handing the reins off to other individuals in those geographic locations who will then continue offering these classes. Okay, So know that pretty soon, um, the Puna and Hilo classes will be available for you if you wanted to do the full comprehensive 12-week plan, business plan. But this will give you a good idea and introduction and see if, this, if it would work for you. Okay? Um, so that being said, chances are I'm never going to be in my office through November 23rd from pretty much this moment on. A um, little bit in August here, but once uh, August 31st, that came, or the uh, the program starts in all those five locations, that's it. I'm on the road. So please, give me a call. If I don't pick up, that means I'm probably driving. I don't like to talk on the phone when I'm driving. Um, and I'll give you a call back. And please, if you can, email would be so much easier. OK? Class location, we're meeting here for every class from 5 to 9. OK, I repeat, 5 o'clock. I know it said 4.30 on some of the flyers. There was, uh, we had to do a time change because apparently there was a class scheduled here till 4.30, so we had to bump it around, OK? So just assume that we're going to meet here from 5, and just assume that we are going to go to 9 o'clock, guaranteed, every single day except for today, OK? Um, especially the first class, I'm doing two modules that I usually do in four hours, or 
I usually do each one in four hours. I'm doing both of them in four hours, so I chopped it down. And um, that's the executive summary and the, um, the business model day. Okay. Guidelines for success are exactly the same. If you do all the things you've done in the past, you should succeed. We're getting to the schedule. Hold on, Randy. August 6th, August 15th, right? August 6th is today. Oh, yeah. August 6th, the first. Right. Uh, course description, same as last time. Really, the goal is to give you comprehensive uh, and aspiring farmers some comprehensive skills. I spread that wrong. Goal of this program is to offer existing and aspiring farmers comprehensive skills that build upon learning from high quality lectures and hands on experiences. The hands on experiences, <laughs> I'm sorry, but hands on experiences come through a lecture. <laughs> I mean, literally, we're going to do a couple of handouts. Um, I'm going to give you some Excel spreadsheets, and you're going to then take them and do what you want with them. Those are your hands-on activities. I'm basically handing you, uh, during the financial side of this class, I'm handing you a completed financials Excel spreadsheet that populates at every single cell. So all you need to do is change the totals or maybe some of the titles, and that you should be able to come up with a finished financial plan, no problem, because of the stuff I've given you, okay? Guidelines for success are all the same. Please have fun. Stop making this class so stressful, folks. <laughs> it's meant to be fun. My two cents on notes, same as last time. If you can't hear what I'm saying and write it down at the same time, stop writing it down, watch the videos later, and just understand the words that are coming out of my mouth, okay? Hopefully you've kind of honed your note-taking skills since the last class, and you've been able to figure out what works best for you. Um, OK, expected outcomes or observable um, evidence of learning. Uh, your observable evidence of learning for this class is going to be a completed business plan, plain and simple. Uh, did that start over? Just go ahead and start over. <coughs> so tap, tap. 